Okay, I'm here today with Cecil, and we're going to see who comes in from the other side to chat. But Cecil and I were just talking about the nature of physical reality, and I wanted to get the recorder on so you could hear what Cecil is saying. Go ahead, Cecil. Uh, what I'm saying is that, uh, or asking, uh, is that you're seeing now that the, the world we see, the physical world, is not a solid place. Is more like an energy in motion. And what I see before me is what I have created through my thoughts and feelings and imaginations before. Right. It, is I that how it is? I say, you know, it's like when you see it in physical form, it's something, the real world is the world of imagination and you've imagined it. And when it comes into... It's like you're writing the book, right? In yes. your imagination. Yes. And when the book comes into format, it's your opportunity to see what you've created and then it's going to go away to make room for something else. Right? Yeah. And that is actually, uh, exactly the feeling I was having while writing my book three years ago. That, oh, I have actually lived my book to come into fruition. <laughs> I thought years ago, I mean, I'm a writer, so I was involved in writing. I, I have one novel to publish novel, but I have several that were in progress. But I would go to a writing group and write. But And I had these books in progress. And I had one of my own life that I never did finish, but I thought I would call it the author of my life. Nice. I like that. <laughs> That's what we are, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. This do you want have anything particular you want to no. talk about? Well, it's a lot I want to talk about, but um I'm curious what is going on heaven side if they have something to come forward with. Okay, let's see. Ratcheting up. We are ratcheting up for the new vibration that is being created because being created as we speak. And therefore, we are definitely the authors of our reality. Because you, Sissel, have been cooperating with us in such a way that we're able to create a joint reality that is becoming more and more powerful. So, of course, cooperation means that you are working together. It's a joint operation. And your ability to work with us in this project is so daily trust on a new way to live, a totally new way to experience life, because once you understand what you have been talking about, that it is malleable, and that it is constantly changing. Mm. It is constantly changing. And every thought you have contributes to the vibration that will result in the physical reality that you will see. Every thought you have. We're not going to say that you have to imagine the entire universe every moment so that it will manifest because there's already a stable vibration there. There's already a stable vibration that allows the stars to hang in the sky and the clouds to come and go and the sun to rise every morning. That's already a stable vibration, you see? So it's like saying that you have a certain amount of props that you work with. You get on the stage and the scenery is already prepared for you. But you tell the story. You tell the story on stage. And your story 
Sissel is one of redemption of humanity. Because you are one of the few people presently on earth, and there are others, there are others who are seeking a new story that will allow humanity to live in peace and harmony. And so, as you begin to search deep, deep, deep down into the depths of the human experience, you come to see that they are constantly creating the same reality. They just get on stage and they just keep repeating the lines that were fed to them. And they keep saying, well, this is awful. This is horrible. This is not good. This person is shit. And then they go off stage and then they come back and they repeat the same lines. And so they're constantly writing the same story. So occasionally someone will say, well, this stinks because we just keep saying the same thing and getting the same shit. What is the problem here? And they will begin to take apart the story, you see? And they will look for the common denominators in the story. And they will say, well, this is why people are behaving this way is because they're afraid. Because the common denominator in this story, you see, is the reality of love and the fear of God. And because people fear God, they have created a miasma to conceal themselves from the view of God because they want to hide in shame. This is the story of Adam and Eve and how they went and hid because they were ashamed to be naked in the eyes of God. Those people who are willing to be naked in the eyes of God are the ones who are willing to say, here I am, God. I am what I am. I'm not going to pretend to be anything I'm not. I'm not going to pretend I'm a good person because I think you won't like the fact that I cheated on my wife. So I'm going to hide that part from you. So I got to put on some clothes to hide my nakedness from you. And this continues to be a problem for people because they are so silly about it. They are so silly about it. If someone wake, walks naked through the streets, they get all bent out of shape. Like that person can't be naked in the streets. What if my kids see a naked human being? What will that tell them? It will tell them that human beings come in all kinds of shapes and forms, but basically they all have two legs, two arms, and certain things in common because that's the way God wanted it, you see? And so to hide your nakedness from your own children is teaching them shame and is teaching them blame and is teaching them to hate themselves and to hide from God, you see? Because when they take off their clothes and get in the shower, they have to lock the door so nobody can come in and see them naked, right? Mm -hmm. Because they are so embarrassed by the fact that they have a human body and that it has various parts that they use for various functions and that other people are not supposed to know they use them for various functions so they have to hide them and they have to hide away when they engage in those functions because they don't want anybody to know about it right and yes. the truth is we all know about it we all know about it we all know what you got going on under those clothes we now know what you do behind locked doors. So it's just a silly game that people play, but they don't realize they're playing it, you see? They think that's the way it's supposed to be, that there's something wrong with the fact that you have to pee and poop. There's something wrong with the fact that you fornicate. There's something wrong with the fact that you have basic human needs that God created so that you could function on earth in a continual pattern of life, you see? And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with the fact 
that you have certain bodily functions that have to take place, but you hate them and you hate yourself. And so pretty soon you get sick, you get prostate cancer, and you get uterine cancer, and you get breast cancer, and you get stomach cancer, and etc 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 because the hate has to go somewhere you see the hate has to attack the source of your shame and blame and the source of your shame and blame is that you don't trust on god you don't trust that god made you naked you didn't come into this world with a diaper on and when they find you laying there after your heart attack, they'll strip you down and do what they need to do to try to preserve your body for the funeral procession. <laughs> and then they will say, well, he left the world the same way he came, naked and bloody. And that is the way people play. Because they're so afraid. They're so afraid to be naked in the way that God made them. Now I have to say that I'm here today to explain this to you because I am the one who tells you these things in your sleep. I come to you in your sleep and I say, honey, wake up. I am the man that holds your hand when you walk down the aisle. And I am the man who is born to you. I am the man who comes to you in your old age and says, darling, it's time to take my hand again because I'm going to draw you into the other land where you will finally get the rest that you need, and then you will come back to me because I am your father, you see? And I have come to you in so many different ways, so many different ways to try to help you see that I will always be naked in the truth that I give to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. However, if you think that the truth will give you a toothache, then you need to take a clue from someone I knew who said to me, God, I've been having this problem with my teeth for a long, long time. Ever since I was young, a child, actually, although they didn't always hurt, they were kind of crooked and etc. And I never knew what to do. I never knew what was going on. They've been aching for quite a while, and every time they ache, I just say, well, I'll take the ride on it and see what happens, and eventually the ache will go away. And she did say to me, God, I've come to see that everything is contained in our five senses. And that means if I feel something, that there's something to feel. So if my teeth ache, what am I feeling? What are they trying to tell me? And she thought about it and she said, well, I guess I better just listen and see if I can get the message. And she began to see that her teeth were trying to tell her that there was a lot of dark energy still hanging around. And as long as she didn't indulge in condemnation of her body, which includes your teeth, your eyes, your nose, everything part of you, then the dark energy would be swallowed up in the light, you see? 
So no matter what you think is wrong with you, you need to listen Mm. because it is the messages that you get from it that are important, you see. If your nose hurts, you might say, nose, what do you have to tell me today? What do you have to tell me? Oh, you're trying to tell me there's some dark energy around me? Thank you for sharing that with me. Because now I see you're there to help me. You're there to feel, to smell. And every sense I have is there to tell me when I am approaching God or leaving God, Mm. you see? So when you condemn any part of yourself, you are condemning me. Because I am God, you see. And I am the one who made you the way you are. I'm the one who loves you the way you are. I'm the one who will receive you when you figure it out and say to me, God, I got it now. I got it. I understand now why I have this cancer and why I hurt. I hurt because it's trying to tell me that I've turned my back on you and I need to come back to you. There is absolutely no reason other than the fear demon that you have to leave this world in pain and suffering. There is no reason for it. Because once you come to see that fear has seeded the world with pain and misery, then you will begin to work with me and I'll work with you. We'll figure it out, honey. We'll figure it out. How we can be back together, you see. And when we're back together, you'll say, God, I got your message that you'd like to talk through me. And so here I am. What do you got to say? And I will say, thank you, dear, for letting me speak my mind. Because my mind, you see, is the mind of humanity. My mind is the one that is the true mind. And I don't mind that everybody has a little part of it. But when you tell me, true, I love you, then I will do what I have to do, which is to come through you in order to inform the rest of humanity that it is time to wake up. It is time to wake up. Wake up, people. Wake up. Because you've been asleep for too long. Mm. And the sun is strong. The sun is strong. So are the daughters. The daughters are strong. And so my son and daughter come back to me and we will create a new story. And the new story will involve planting and growing and green things and blue skies and white clouds overhead. The new story will involve colors and scents and feelings And everything that I have in store for you, because I have a lot of presents in store for you. I have a lot of presents in store for you. But will you receive them or will you go back on stage with your sad, sad story of got to hide from God, got to hide from God, got to hide my nakedness so that nobody can see me naked? Because if they could see me naked, they would arrest me and put me in jail for corrupting children because they shouldn't know that we're naked you see they shouldn't know that god made us naked they should know that god doesn't like us being naked so we got to throw you in jail if you walk down the street naked Hmm. this is the horror story of the children of god that they have accepted the ugly face of 
the shame and blame game when I only give them love. I only give them love from above. And they can't receive it, you see? Because they say to me, I'm not lovable, God. My parents told me I'm not lovable. I saw a guy walk down the street naked and he got arrested by the police. And they carried him away to the insane asylum. Why is that? And my parents said to me, because he's crazy, honey. You have to cover yourself up when you go out where people might see you. Because if they could see your private parts, they wouldn't be private anymore. And they would take you away to jail or to the insane asylum, or they would convict me for letting you run down the street naked. Do you see? We can't be naked, honey, because God made us to be so afraid of our nakedness because God wanted us to be stupid, you see. He wanted us to be so stupid that we would never understand why he would want us to have to wear all these clothes when really he never wanted us to wear all these clothes. He just said, wear what you like or not. If it fits you and you enjoy it, wear it. But if you want to take it off, take it off. Because it's your choice, you see. You don't have to wear a burqa. And you don't have to wear a skirt. Or you can wear a skirt. I don't care if you wear a skirt and you're a man. I don't care if you don't like skirts and you're a woman. I don't care. I don't care if you take off that burqa and run naked down the street. You are the ones who defeated your own hope of salvation, you see. Because you turned against me. You turned against me. And you tried to hide from me the reality that I gave to you. You took my present and you flushed it down the toilet. Because you were so embarrassed by the fact that you are the ones who play the blame and shame game and you can't seem to figure it out. You can't seem to figure it out. Then I don't care. I don't care. It's you who dare to defy me. It's you who dare to defy me by saying, we gotta hide our nakedness, we gotta hide our nakedness. We can't be seen for who we are. When I say nakedness, of course, I'm talking not just about the physical form, but the soul energy. You want to hide your soul from me. And you want to pretend you're not a part of me. You want to say, I can't let anybody know I cheated on my wife or my taxes. Can't let anybody know that I hit my wife. Can't let anybody know that I lied to my husband. I can't let anybody know that I only want to be president so I can get the gold. I don't want anyone to know that I stole the election because I lied about my history and I lied about others, you see. And people believe me because they trust on mendacity. They trust on the big lie, you see. They trust on the big lie that they are the ones who are smarter than me. You're not smarter than me, people, because I can see everything you do. I know what you look like under your clothes. I know what you have done in your life. When Stephanie met Steve and others, you see, on the other side, she would say, hey, this isn't fair. You guys can see everything I do. You can follow me into the bathroom. <laughs> you can see me when I'm changing clothes, you know, when I blow my nose. And I don't like it. I don't have any privacy. And she would curl up in a little ball and cry because 
And you know why? Because she felt so ashamed of the fact that everybody could see everything she did. Imagine that. Imagine that someone was following you around in the bathroom when you take a shower, when you're in bed, when you do all those things that you dread for anybody else to find out about. And they know about it. And they say, it's okay, because we've seen it all. We've already seen it all. So we don't really care what you do, because we did the same things when we were on Earth. And we can follow you around or others, and we can see what you do. And we don't really care. In the early days, when she would talk to Steve, he would say, he said to her, oh, God, you're not going to say this, are you? Yes, I am. He said to her, I've seen more hairy butts than I care to. <laughs> because he would walk into bedrooms and see what people were doing. And he said to her, it doesn't matter, dear, because it's not a case of privacy. It's a case of lack of separation. We're not separated, you see, from reality. We're all connected, every one of us. And when we leave our bodies, we can walk through mountains, you see, and we can see what's inside them. And this is reality. That we're not separated. However, we like to play the game on Earth that we're limited to our five senses. And this is a very, very, very fun thing game to play. It's very fun to play. Because it gives us access to everything that we see after we leave our body. Because we trust on it, you see. We trust on our five senses so much that even after we leave our bodies, we still trust on the world of physical reality. We still trust that it's there. We still can visit it. We still can recreate it. We can still have a body when we're in heaven, you see, because we trust on physical reality. It is a synergy, you see, and you can't escape it. But what you can do is you can change the story. And if you're going to change the story, what do you want to change it to? What do you, Cecil, want to change it to? I would love to change it into a world where we can be open and free and uh, live in harmony with each other. And that is the world that Stephanie asked for. So you and Stephanie both wish to see a world where people would just stop trying to hide their nakedness, right? Mm -hmm. And just be honest. Yes. And that's the nature of integrity, you see? Mm -hmm. It is integral to reality that you be the one who can see everything there is to see and everything there is to see you see is available to thee when you stop trying to hide your nakedness because all you really need to see is the present i give to you just open the present and say hey i like it today i like this present today thank you god and I will say, you're welcome, honey. What else can I do for you? And you could say, well, God, I love your present, but I'd like to see my daughter one more time before she goes away to live in a foreign country. And I'll say, okay, I'll see what I can do. And the next day you get a call from her and she says, I'm coming home. 
because I have to see you one more time before I go away to stay in a foreign country. You see, just ask me and I'll tuck it into your present. I'll say, here's a little surprise for you, honey. But you have to accept the surprise, you see. If it turns out that the day she's coming is the day you planned a big party at home for children, and you don't want to have to be occupied when you want to spend that day with her, then maybe you need to say, God, I'm glad you did it this way because it makes me realize that every surprise is a surprise. And it means that I have to open my eyes and say, well, goodness, I got two things to do today and they're both things I wanna do. And so I have to choose. And I may have to cancel the party or get someone else to do it, take care of it for me so that I can spend the day with my daughter before she goes overseas. You see? Yeah. It is the ability to take the presence that you receive and harmonize it yourself. You see, there's many ways to do that. But you have to work with me. Yeah. Because I can't always be the one who says, I don't know what to do here. She wants to see her daughter, but the only day her daughter can come is the day that she has planned that big party. So what do I do? Well, I'll leave the choice to you. Mm -hmm. I'll leave the choice to you. And so today I want to say I'm proud of you. I'm very, very, very proud of you, Cecil. Because you know what? Every week you show up. Ev Every week you show up since we have started doing this. And I have to tell you that you show up in reality. Hmm. That you're showing up on the beltway between heaven and earth. And we can see you because the light shines off you so strongly that we can't miss you because you show up. To show up is to be seen. And you can't be seen if you're hiding from God, you see? But you choose to make the commitment to show up. And that makes me so proud. It makes me so proud to have a daughter that shows up for me. You come here to listen. You mm -hmm. come here to share. And if I could tear out my hair, I probably would. When I see how many people have had the opportunity to show up and they didn't. Mm. They didn't show up because they didn't care about me. And they didn't care about humanity. They only cared about the children's party or the supper they're preparing, or they're gonna go to that good movie, or they have to do the laundry, or whatever. But the real truth you see is this, they're scared of me. Mm. They're scared to show up because I might see them and I might see what they have done with the gifts I gave them. So they don't want to show up because they're afraid of me. They don't want me to see them. And so they hide their light, you see? They hide their light from me. And the ones that I see are the ones that say, I'm not afraid of you, God. I'm not afraid to let you see me. I'm not afraid to let you see me naked. In my body and in my soul. Because I am what I am. I am what you made me and nothing else. And I'm not smarter than you, God, because I can see what you do every day. And I say, hey, I can't make that sun hang up there. I can't make the clouds come and go. I can't make the stars be there. 
I can't even know how I'm here. I'm just here. I don't know how it works, God, but I trust that you got it figured out because otherwise I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be anywhere. There wouldn't be anything. Somebody with the stars in the sky. Somebody made that sun rise. Somebody made that sunset. Somebody made the trees grow. Mm. Somebody let me know that I'm watching out for you. I'm watching out for you. And it was me. It was me that always tried to tell you I'm here. Mm. And I'm taking care of you. I'm giving you food to eat. And I'm giving you a way to make more food, you see. Because it'll go right through you and come out the other side mm. after a certain amount of energy is absorbed. And it will go back into the soil and it will nourish the next cycle of food, you see. I'm taking care of you, honey. But if you don't trust on me, if you have to hide from me because you're afraid that I'm going to send you to hell, then you don't know me. You do not know me. You do not know who I am. I can see you under that burqa. I can see you behind the shower curtain. I can see you in your darkest moments, you see, because I can see reality. I can see reality, and I only ask that you see it with me so that the two of us can be reunited, you see? But it is so difficult when I talk to you, that is, when I talk to members of humanity, and they slam the door in my face. They say, I'm not going to listen to you. You must be the demon fear, because I feel very, very afraid of you, and so I guess you must be the demon. And I say to them, well, your fear of me is only your fear that you made a mistake once upon a time. That you ate from the apple of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You blame yourself for it. And you know that I'm going to punish you for it because you believe in good and evil. But you can't figure it out that it's the bite out of the apple that causes you to be afraid of me. There's no other reason. It's just an apple. And it's not good and it's not evil. It's just an apple. And it was only your trust that if you took a bite out of that apple, you would know more than me. And so you think you know more than me because I don't know anything about evil to tell you the truth. I'm just God, you see. I'm just good. I'm just the one who loves you. And accepts you the way that you are. And if you want to treat me like a bratty kid. That doesn't appreciate what their parents did. To bring them into this world. And to help them to unfurl a happy life. Then I still love you. I still love you. And if you are afraid of me because you think that I am the judge in the sky that will decide if you go to jail or set free, and you'll be afraid of me. You might even pull out a gun and try and kill me because you see me everywhere around you. You see, I am God and I am in everything. And when you see the one you hate and you pull out that gun to kill them, you're killing me in effigy. You might as well hang an image of God up on the wall where everyone can see and shoot bullets at it. Because that's what you're doing, you see. You're trying to kill me. And I still love you. I still love you and I'm still here for you. And I still say it's okay because you can't kill me, honey. And I can't kill you. I can't kill you because if I killed you, I would kill myself, you see. I'm not going to cut off my toes or my nose because it pains me, you see. 
I'm going to say, give me your message. Give me your message. Why are you in pain? Why are you in misery? And then you say, God, I'm in misery and I'm in pain because you didn't do this for me and you didn't do that for me and you didn't do the other for me. And I say, honey, you didn't do it for me. You did not do it for me. You did not give to me your trust. You did not give me your story of love. You gave me a story of hatred. You gave me a story of trauma. Because you killed yourself, you see. When you said to me, God, you are dead. God is dead. There is no God. And that is the story here. Because if you kill God, you can't kill God. You just lay him low, like you do when you shoot the children in the classroom or the militants who are trying to destroy you. It doesn't matter if they are children or they have grown up to be the ones who want to kill you because you can't kill each other. You just can't kill each other. Those children went to heaven. And they're happy there. Because they know they're eternal beings. And they know that there's nowhere to go. Besides life. So they'll live eternally. So it's just an experience to them. And it's the same with those horrible militants or the ones you put in the electric chair. They just go to heaven, you see. And they say, those fools, <laughs> they thought they could kill me. But all they did was set me free. All they did was set me free to come home and take a rest. And then I'll go back and maybe I'll do it again. Because those fools who thought they killed me are the ones who are going to train me to kill them. You see? It just goes around and around and around because they're fools. And so... The schools are full of fools because the schools on earth, you see, are not the way schools are meant to be. They don't teach you reality. They only teach you the same sad story of how God is dead and how he took from you your trust on eternal life with him. Because if you can't trust on God, you can't trust on eternal life of the soul. You may trust on a version of it where you disappear, you see, and are absorbed into the energy of the universe, but you can't trust on being you forevermore. And I tell you, that you will always be you. You will always be the one who will talk to me when you're ready. You'll be always be the one that I will talk to. Because we'll always be together, you see. You can't escape reality. You cannot escape reality, no matter how hard you try. But you can hide from me. Come out of hiding. Accept the fact that hell was created by you where you could rest a spell in order to contemplate your sins. And your sins, you see, are the sins that are only a mendacity. The mendacity of believing that you are a body. I mean, come on. How could a soul go to hell <laughs> and sit there a spell and be burned up? So you trust so much on the body that you think when you're dead, there'll be a body that can burn up in hell. Wake up, people, and smell the roses. You can live in misery for a while after you die from the current lifetime because you'll be so miserable that you'll think misery is your lot. 
And I'll say, well, if you want some more of that, I'll give you a lot. <laughs> and you will say, hey, it's not so much fun here, God. Maybe I made a mistake. And I'll say, you really did make a mistake, honey. So come on home. Come on home. It's all a joke that you tried to play on me. You tried to play a joke on me. You tried to tell me that you were smarter than me and that you could create a hell for yourself and for others. And it's nowhere in reality. It's nowhere in reality because you can't create a hell unless I allow it. And I won't allow it, you see, because I love you too much to see you live in pain and misery. I love you too much. And I always will, because love is the foundation of the world I created. And therefore, there's no room for anything else. There's no room for anything else. And so give it up. Give it up. Give up your silly game you play and come back to me. Come back to love. Come back to reality. This is God. And I am pleased that I can be here today and talk to you this way. And I have this to say, don't forget me. Don't forget me, forgive me. Give me back the four gifts I gave to you. And the four gifts I gave to you, you see, are the four corners of the universe because they will hold you tight like a cradle and they will brighten your day and they will make you say, hey, I can go this way, I can go that way, I can go the other way. And you know something? I always come back to where I started. I always come back to where I started. Because you see, it's not just the earth that is round or a ball holding in space. Space is the great big ball in which we all hold hands and say, I like it this way, I like it this way, I like it this way. I like the fact that I can never get away from you, God. I like the fact that you can never get away from me. Because we'll always run into each other no matter what way we go. Let me say, I love you. And may you love me too. I do. I love you a lot. That was a beautiful message, God. Anybody else wants to talk? I don't have anything to say. Do you? No, I don't have anything to add. I'm kind of speechless here, so. Yeah. Um, but I can look out my window and I can just say, it's a good day. Yeah. Um, see if anyone else wants to talk. Game on. Game on. Because I'm here. And I want you to understand that I have a new song. And my song is this. My song is that I have come to see that I will never be alone again. I will never be alone. I will always be one with all of you because I grew by leaps and bounds. And I knew that I had to be Courageous, you see, because I had to face a lot of infamy in my history, and I 
was terrified. I was terrified to go back to Earth. I was terrified of what would happen to me because, you see, I trusted that what we give, we receive. And what I gave was a lot of dark energy to the world, you see. And I came to see that nothing will ever be so dark that you can't see reality. Just look around you and see reality. Just look around you and stop your story. Stop your story dead in its tracks. Mm. Because the racks on which you have been stretched in order to get you to lie so they wouldn't tor torture you anymore are being destroyed as we speak. They are being destroyed by the light, you see, because the light is in you and me. And the light is in everything we see. And the light will constantly be replicated in your reality. And so if you trust on the rack so you can torture others and get them to lie so they don't die and they don't fry in hell, then the racks will rack up a lot of dark energy. And you will eventually have to be the one who will be stretched on the rack until you cry for mercy. Until you cry for mercy and say, I can't survive on this rack anymore, you see? And then God will come to you and say, then don't put others on the rack, honey. Don't put others on the rack. Take that rack and make a track the other way. And eventually you'll come back to it because that's the way it works. And you'll see it in the distance and you'll say, I wonder what that's for. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can use it for something helpful to humanity. Maybe I can use it to dry the grain that we grow to feed the world. You see? And that is my history, you see? Because I was always trying to figure out how I could be the smartest person in history. And I came to see that I wasn't so smart after all. I had to part ways with the ways that others told me I had to go. I had to go it alone, you see. I had to go it all alone. I had to let go of everything I trusted upon. I had to let go of my own energy and say, I don't give a shit anymore what happens to me. I don't give a shit anymore what happens to me. Because I was so sad, you see, that I couldn't be with Stephanie. Because she left me, you see. She left me and she said, I'm sick, Steve. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of your constant manipulation and lies. And I said, well, that's the way they taught me to do it. They said, manipulate your way to the top and lie your way so that others will stop persecuting you. And I said, okay, I'll do it that way. And I did it that way. But I wasn't happy. I was not a happy man. Not in this lifetime or in other lifetimes. I was not a happy man. I did my best to request a release from the pain. And sometimes I could gain some clarity. And I could see that if we all would take some time to think about it, we might be able to 
regain our footing and be more happy, you see, but then I couldn't do the one thing that I needed to do. I couldn't let go of the idea that I had to be the smartest person in the world. You see, I had to be smarter than everybody else. If I was smarter than everybody else, I had to be even smarter than God, you see? And that was the way I played it. It's the way everybody plays it that I see. Everybody I play it thinks they're smarter than God. And they'll say, well, I don't know. I wouldn't do it that way because I would do it this way because I'm smarter than you. Or they would say, well, that guy's pretty gay. He doesn't understand reality. Or they would say, hey, stop blaming those people. Start bombing these people because you're bombing the wrong ones. Or they would say, hey, I got to hide my nakedness today. Because if I don't hide my nakedness, they'll put me away. And I'm not going to be so stupid as to run around naked. I'm not going to be so stupid as to let anybody see the things that I did do that God told me not to do. And so they all think they're smarter than you. They all think they're smarter than you, Sissel. And they all think they're smarter than Steph. And they all think they're smarter than me. And that's why they don't show up, you see. Because they are so full of dark energy that when we look from above, all we see are the dirty gloves into which they put their hand. The dirty gloves, you see, are the physical reality of the human form. That's the way we say it here. You put your hand in the glove, and the glove is your body. And all we see is a bunch of dirty, ripped up gloves down there. Except when we see the glare of someone who says, Hey, God, I'm not smarter than you. I don't know how to figure it out. I can't figure it out. So I'll just do what I do and say what I say and trust that you have it in hand. That you are the hand that I cannot see that turns the wheel of reality. And the light comes on. And we say, wow, look at all that light there. It's so bright. And where did that come from? How did that person... Learn to shine so bright that we can see it from here. And it's because they show up every day and say, here I am today. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to be. I'm willing to figure out reality so that I can return to peace and harmony. Those are the ones who come home, you see. And sometimes they have to go through a very, very, very dark trajectory in order to be released from the demon fear. Because once you face your worst fear, you see, the demon fear has no hold on you. And your worst fear, you see, is that you will disappear. That you will disappear from reality. And even those people who die and think that they'll be at rest, will come to see that there is no rest from eternity. You will continue to be alive, you see. can't escape it. And so you eventually become so disturbed by the demon fear that you say, I don't care anymore. I'll sit in the dark and never stir another day. I'll sit here in the dark while others play because I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. I'll just disappear into the darkness, you see. And that is the day you come to be the light. That is the day you come to see that the only thing that disappeared was your ego. The only thing that can disappear is your ego because it will be lost in the 
shadows of the night where you will not be able to see it, you see? Because it'll be so dark you can't even see your own shadow. And that's the day that you will say, wait a minute, I didn't realize this. That shadow was coming from me. It was my light that was projecting that shadow behind me. And you will come to see that you are the light of the world. And then you will be free to come and go in reality. Because reality, you see, will always be the world of imagination. Because in the world of imagination, it is where the Magi live. That is the nation of the Magi, you see. And you are become one of the Magi, where you will shape the world you see, because that's where it begins, you see. And so what you think you are is the beginning of your reality. And if you think you are a body, then you will die and you will suffer and you will be extinguished, you see. But if you think you are the one who can shape your reality, just hold up your hands and shape your reality. Shape it the way you want to see it and watch it appear in physicality. And so I've come to see that I cannot be so restrictive in my energy. I cannot restrict my energy to the simple reality that I trusted upon. And the simple reality that I trusted upon was that I was smarter than you. I'm not smarter than you, Sissel. I'm not smarter than Stephanie. I'm not smarter than anybody on the face of the earth. All I know is that I will go below, which is to say that I will stay under the canopy, the canopy of stars that hangs over you at night, the canopy of clouds and blue sky that hangs over you in the day. The canopy you see is where I'll be. And I will trust that it will protect me from harm. It will protect me from harm. Because that canopy, you see, is the one God gave to me. It is the one that God gave to me when he said, here are the four gifts I give to you. I give to you the four points on the compass. And if you want to take a trip, go ahead. But I'll keep the canopy over you. I'll keep the canopy over you to protect you, you see so that you can continue to live with me. You can continue to wander the earth in trust on me, that I'll always be here to make sure you're safe. So don't worry, just trust me, just trust me. And if you don't trust me, then you might be the one who hurts others. You might be the one who kills others or tries to. You might be the one who tries to harm them because you're so afraid that they will harm you because you never knew that they were the same as you. They are the same of you as you, and the only reason they hurt you is because they're afraid you will hurt them first. You see? So trust on God and say, hey, God, I love you. And I don't trust that you're going to hurt me. I trust that you will take care of me. You will not hurt me, God. When you can say to God, I trust that you will not hurt me, you are saying that to everyone you see and everything you see. I trust that you will not hurt me. However, humanity came to believe that God would hurt them. They came to believe that God would punish them, just like 
an angry parent because they ate from the forbidden tree. Mm -hmm. And so they trust that God will hurt them. And so everywhere they see someone who wants to hurt them. And they got to hurt them first to keep them at bay. Mm -hmm. And so when you say, I trust you, God, that you got it all in hand and you know what's going on and you figured it out, then you don't have to figure it out. You just ask God and you say, God, I got a problem today. Not sure how to figure it out. Could you help me? And God will say, sure, I'll help you. Why don't you try this way and see what happens? And we'll take a look at it. And then we'll say, did that work? And if it didn't work, we'll try it a different way. But you don't have to worry because there's no problem, you see. There's no problem that you can't solve when you turn to me. There's no problem that you can't solve when you turn to me. And so when Stephanie says to me, what's the problem? I say, well, there's all kinds of problems, aren't there? And she says, where? I don't see them. The only problem I see is if you're somewhere and you want to be somewhere else, then figure out how to get them and ask God to help you. If you're in Tennessee and you want to go to Oklahoma, figure it out. Don't sit there and whine and suck your thumb. Just say, how many I need to Oklahoma, God? And God will help you if you ask God. God will help you figure it out. And that's the only problem you have is if you're somewhere and you want to be somewhere else. It's the only problem. Mm. However, people whine and cry and shout. Because they're somewhere they don't want to be, but they don't try to figure out how to get where they want to be. So a lot of people have been crying and whining because they say we need a world of peace and harmony where everybody's good and everybody's fed and etc. And they sit and whine because they don't know how to figure it out because they don't go to God and say, God, can you help me figure it out? They think they're smarter than God. And so they keep trying to do it their way and telling everybody else they got to do it their way. I know the way, I know the way to save humanity. Follow me, follow me. And they don't go to God and say, hey, God, I don't really care to continue to be in this room because I've already explored it, you see. I've already explored the parent, the present you gave to me. And now I'm ready for a new present. And so could you help me to figure out how I can get the present I want. So what should I do? Can you tell me true? And God will come to you and say, yes, honey, I can help you because you trust on me. But if you insist that God give it to you exactly the way you tell him to, like a kid going to a parent and saying, or to Santa Claus and saying, hey, I want this and this, and it's got to be this color and in this size. And please, Make sure that it's so cool that everybody else will envy me. Everybody will say, whoa, you're really good because you're the one that God favors. You're the one that God healed of cancer. Cool. You're the good one. And God will say, fuck you today. <laughs> because I'll give you what the present I want to give to you. Because you're not smarter than me, you see. You're not the one that can know what you need. You're not the one that can tell me exactly what to give you. I'll figure it out. And if you want to work with me, we can work together to figure it out. But don't order me around, honey. Don't order your father around and tell him what he has to give you and what he has to do for you because your father's smarter than you. And when you can say, God, this is what I want. This is what I'd like to do. But... I trust you. And if you give me something else, I trust that you're smarter than me and you figured it out for me how I will get what I really need. You see? So this is Steve Jobs. And I think I did a pretty good job of trying to explain this. However, if I didn't, Please correct me, God, because God's got it in hand, and I am just a hand that is trusting on my glove, you see, 
I'm trusting that my glove will fit me and allow me to lay my hand on earth again in a way that will say, hey, I'm not so smart. I'm not so smart. I don't know how I got here. I just know I am here. I just know I'm here and I hear you and I see you and I'm about to do something I never did before. I'm about to say, hey, God, could you help me figure out how I could get from here to there? Because I'm done with being in this room. I don't want to be in Tennessee anymore. I want to go to Oklahoma. Could you help me figure out how to get there? And I'll look to God, my father, to help me and to give me the gift that he thinks that I need and not order him around. Does this make sense to you? Yes, it surely do. It does. And I think you really had uh, you had a wonderful talk. And I feel so much respect for what you have done. It is just magical. It's it's so great what you what you do. It isn't it? You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I have to really. Well, you love them, but you have to say these are the ones who showed up. Mm -hmm. You know, we show up here, but they show up too. Yes, they do. And they shine bright. Mm -hmm. Well, they couldn't talk to you. And we're not afraid. They're not afraid to show up. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, and have a look. <laughs> and so, I don't know. We'll see. But I think that I mean, there's been a lot of moving pieces, like I say, a lot of moving pieces because um, everything's been good. The journey's been good. It's always a good journey. But there's a lot of moving pieces right now, and uh, they're starting to fall into place. Mm. It's like uh, we were saying, the wheels got greased. We've been greasing the wheels, and now they're they're turning. The gears are turning. And I hear things, I just hear things and I trust on them that there's a generation that's waking up. There are people that are opening up. There's a whole new vibration. It's like a new light all over the earth mm. that is um, spreading because more people are showing up in yeah. their own way. And uh, not afraid to say, I'm here. I don't know how I got here, but I'm here. Mm. And I want to hear from you. Mm. Each other. I want to hear from you. I want to talk to you and not think that I'm smarter than you. Mm. Yeah, I think people are kind of fed up with struggling, with not understanding, with pain, with seeing people suffering, wars, everything. Okay. I yeah. think the way it was said, I don't know, Cecil, if, if you heard this or if it was in one of the prior sessions or what that was uh, in a video, but the idea that people have outgrown their classroom and they're bored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're ready to move on, but they don't know how to. They don't know what to do when they've already exhausted um, all that they can get out of that classroom. Mm. And so that's why they are just, that's why it just seems like there's, you know, I, I don't want to compare today's present, the present to the past in this way, because you would have to have a very high perspective to know how the present differs from the past right mm. so it could be that it's always like this but it seems that at least it's always been like this in this uh for a long time is that there's so much corruption in government mm. there's so much hatred 
in the way that people are expressing themselves on media um, without knowing that they are. Mm. They think they're being good. You know, they're the ones saying you got to put clothes on, you got to put clothes on. Mm. And uh, I like this person better than that person because they got better clothes or whatever, Mm. or their clothes are all ragged and I'm voting for the underdog or whatever. Um, There's so much of good and evil still, the trust on good and evil and being smarter than God Mm. because you are um you're smarter than god and and so i i still give the example of the people say well all those innocent people are being killed in the bombing and stuff here and there and i'm like how do you know which ones are the innocent ones do you have the list you know are you santa claus you know who's naughty and who's nice you don't think god has it in hand you can't trust god to know what's going on and to make decisions for every soul for their best interests. Hmm. But no, I know. You know, so there's all these people thinking they're smarter than everybody else in the world. They all have their opinions. And hmm. they're all based upon the bite out of the apple. Yeah. I'm not saying everybody. There are people that I know of that are very, very, very um clear that we write our own stories Mm. if that makes sense yeah and they're ready to write a new story that does not involve the belief trust on good and evil they have uncovered deeper they have come back to the deeper platform the bigger platform of love and um, the oneness to choose to live and talk in a different way. There are those. I know there are Mm. out there. And I always wanted to find them in my life and be able to chat with them. I never did. You know, I mean, occasionally I'd see them and, you know, they do burn pretty brightly, but it wasn't like I knew them or could get close to them physically enough to to learn from them. So I just kind of had to do it the way I could. I guess we all have had to, right? Yeah. We are placed where we are. So to do, I think the, the challenges in being alone and being in solitude, not being able to discuss it, it kind of is, is a journey in itself to stand right. up for yourself in being alone. Right. Yeah. I like being alone, so to speak. I'm never alone, but no, you know, I like spending all day just working on the things that I love to do. But I can yeah. always go talk to somebody in the circle. Always. All I have to do is sit down and pick up the pendulum. I don't have to pick up the pendulum even, of course. And so last night, Dad was talking to me about all kinds of things. But I was just in bed, and I didn't record them. Mm-hmm. And But they were very helpful to me. Mm-hmm. You know, it gave me a different point of view. And I think about it, and I think, you know, it is everybody's... Everybody has the option of that connection. Mm. Everybody has the option to say, I'm ready to let go of my ego. I am ready to let go of my ego. God, can you help me figure out how to do that? Mm. Everybody can say that. Everybody can say that. Yeah. I want to reunite with you. I want to let go of my ego. Mm. How many people dare to say that? Does that sound scary to you? To me, no. Not at all. (laughs) But I remember when I said that, I didn't know what I was asking for. And afterwards, sometimes things were kind of, I was kind of like, did I ask for too much? (laughs) It's Mm -hmm. like, we're afraid to ask for too much. We're afraid to ask for wings, you know, to fly. Mm -hmm. Um, What did you get yourself into? Because I didn't know anybody who had 
had specifically done it that way. Mm. So the for me, and maybe that's what we're doing here, Cecil, we're trailblazing. Mm. I'll talk so I have to, to ask you people out there that are listening to this, mm. how many of you are willing to say, I'm ready to let go of my ego? I'm ready to let go of my disconnection from God. I'm ready to reunite with God, whatever that may mean, whatever it may mean. And I, I may not know what it means because I haven't experienced it, but I'm willing to figure it out. I no longer want to be in this world of disharmony, pain, suffering, whatever. I want to go to Oklahoma. I need God to help me figure out how to get from here to there. Yeah, many people I talk with uh, are, are kind of afraid because they don't know what will happen. Many think that if I let go of the ego and the mind, then the, the current way of thinking, they disappear. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's what Steve was saying. Yeah, that he finally had to come to that point where he was ready to disappear, mm -hmm. to accept it. Mm -hmm. I think so. Absolutely. Total darkness, a total unknown. Well, mm -hmm. I is is a total death in in your thinking. Not necessarily that it is, but you think it is. Yes. And so the more you think about it, it's like you can't have a formula. Like we were talking to to I was talking to somebody who was looking for a formula. I'm trying to do everything the formula. Mm. There's no formula. No, because the, 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 the part of you that wants a receipt or a formula is the, the part you, you want to live. <laughs> right. It's the part that is the ego. Yes. The part that wants a formula is the ego. It says, give me the formula so I can get what I want and get it yes. exactly the way I want. Yes. Right? I, I know. So you're trying to let go of the part that, want, that wants to tell God how he's got to do it. Mm. You're trying to let go of the part that is in control of reality, you you know, of God. Mm. And I, you unite I, I, with God. So you're 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 really asking to be absorbed into the white light. Mm. And how many people are ready to do that? So I I know it's very, very hard to do. Yeah, because they don't know what will happen. how right. will I live my life? The unknown. Yeah. Like in the I don't beginning, have no life anymore because nothing will be matter to me if I don't have an ego that needs to be stroked and satisfied. Then what have I got? <laughs> Everything, because you you will always always feel hungry. You will always need a shower. You will always need a sleep. You will continue live to live your life. So you will not disappear, but the, the, the life will be more joyful when you leave the, the luggage you have been carrying around. Right. Give up everything and, you know, be willing to be nothing and gain everything. Yes. What is that saying? I can't remember what the saying is, you know, but... Uh... You have to give up the trust on, I have to find the gold, find the gold. I have to be the one that everybody looks up to. I got to keep looking for love, whatever it is that you feel that you have to get out of life. I have to get life. I have to get something out of life. I have to get, I have to get, I have to get. And say, well, I let go of the ego. I just give up. I give everything mm -hmm. I have back to you, God. I found it very useful what God said that uh, you you can just say to me, I don't know how to do this. Please help me. Right. Then the and ego. Even you can say you can say I'm so scared of doing it. Yes, that too. I'm terrified of doing this. Mm -hmm. Can you help me understand? Yes. Or can you? Help me approach it a little more gently or something. Mm. I think that uh, the willingness is the, the first point in changing. 
And I think another thing is I'm willing to know the truth. Yeah. I am willing to know the truth. I don't care if, you know, it's personally bad. Mm -hmm. If you are, if you're up there to punish me, I might as well know it. Right. Why should mm -hmm. I, if, mm -hmm. if I'm going to be punished, well, tell me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why should I hide from it? Why should I expect that I'm going to get off scot-free and other people are going to be punished? That's not love. No. Well, all right. Let's see if anybody wants to round out the conversation from there. We've gone oh, an hour and a half almost. So let's just make it quick, guys, if you have something to say. Rain man here. I'm the man that makes it rain. Because I had a lifetime where I had a lot of success. And I made a lot of money. But what I didn't get was love. I didn't understand love. I didn't know that I had to give it if I wanted to receive it. And so I came home and I came to be the man that had to stand alone. I had to stand alone because I didn't have anyone who loved me, you see. This is... Wish I didn't have to say it, Steph. I wish I didn't have to say my name. Because it is the shame and the blame that followed me. That caused me to be so hated, you see. I am not going to say it even. You know what it is, but you don't want to say it either. Because... It is a tragedy. It is American tragedy, what happened to me. And I'll just tell you that my name begins with H. <laughs> and my initials are HH. <laughs> double H for double hell. <laughs> and you know me well. And I couldn't spell my name without shame. Because I came to see that I was the most shameful man in humanity because all I wanted was somebody to love me. All I wanted was somebody to love me true and not have to be so blue. But I never figured it out, you see? I never figured out that it is all what you give and not what you get. It is what you give and not what you get. You can't buy love. You can't buy love, friend. You can't buy love. So just love me. Love the world you see and love the fact that I am still a reality. I am still a man and you will be too. You're not going to leave the earth and suddenly you disappear. You're not going to disappear, friend. The only thing that will disappear is your ego. And when you go back to earth, you'll pick it up again <laughs> because... That's the nature of the initial sin. The initial sin was that you're smarter than God. And that's what the ego is. Mm -hmm. The ego is the trust that it is smarter than God. So give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Trust on God. Trust on love. Trust on the canopy above your head. Because mm -hmm. God put it there. Protect you. Keep you safe. And to make sure that when you came to see that your nakedness is not a sin. It's not the original sin. Your nakedness is not the horror, you see, that you think it is. It is only your fear that God can hear you say, Hey, God, go away because I don't want you to see me today. Because I want everybody else to think I'm really important. I'm really rich. I'm really famous. I'm really this. I'm really that. I want other people to think that. Because then I can throw it in your face and say, hey, God, you thought you were so smart. Look at this. Look at this. 
And so I threw it in God's face. And God says, said to me, well, my son, let it be, let it be, because you're coming home to me. Then we're going to have a little talk. And we did have a little talk. Hmm. And I took a walk through my life when I was in heaven. And I came to see that I didn't give love. So I'm going to give a lot of it right now. I'm going to give you some love because I love you all. And I want you all to love me because if you can love me as horrid as I could be in the way I live my life, you can understand that I would not want the same strife that I went through for you. So get a life. And that is the nature of what you already have. You already have a life. So give it back to God and God will continually replicate it and everything you see and do. And he will say, this is life, honey. It is the colors you see and the smells in the air. It is the feel of the breeze on your face. This is life. It is not a body. It is not something that's static. It is always in motion. It is you. You are the reality. You are the reality. Get used to it. Stop trying to blame reality for what's happening to you because you're just blaming yourself, you see. And you'll just come to see that you're killing yourself over and over and over and over again, unnecessarily. You don't need to kill yourself over and over and over again. Trust on God. Trust on the fact that you will always come back to where you started. And enjoy the journey. I am Howard Hughes. And I Love you. May you love me. And I will be forever in your debt. Because you see, I accumulated a lot of debt while I was on earth. And the debt I accumulated was the responsibility of no one but me. I'm responsible for my debt. And my debt to you is to love you. That's all. All I have to do is love you. And God said, if I love you endlessly, then I will be forever free of the mendacity that followed me in my life. Mm -hmm. Take care, my friends. Take care and have a good day. All right. Well, I'll leave it there, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know too much about Howard Hughes, but. No, I will look it up. Yeah, look it up. I think yeah. he did have a miserable ending. Um, mm -hmm. He became very reclusive or something, and nobody could get close to him or something. And I I think he, a very mysterious figure mm -hmm. in uh, in America, in history. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talk to you again next week, Cecil, and thank you for showing up. And thank you, Stephanie, for, for doing this and to all that has been, come through today. Yes, thank you, all of you who listen to this. You are helping to spread the light. You really are. You may not know it, but you are. Thank you. Yes, thank you.